Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you might be watching this video Bible study. So good to be able to study God's Word with you again today. We're going to continue working our way through 1 Corinthians, today arriving at 1 Corinthians chapter 9. As we begin our study, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the people that you have placed into our lives, who regularly bring to us the truths of your word. Help us to grow in our appreciation of those people and to eagerly support and continually encourage them in their important work. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Now, last week, we had the opportunity to talk about Christian freedom and when to and when not to exercise that Christian freedom, to, to make use of the rights that God has given to us. We saw that the driving principle in making those decisions of how and when to do certain things always leads us back to love and edification. Is this something that is going to build other people up or not? And if not, then I'll just pass, even though I might have the right to do so. Now, actually, the Apostle Paul could speak from personal experience when it came to having the right to do something and out of love for others, choosing not to make use of that right. However, it also appears that his decision had been misinterpreted and maybe even abused. So what was this right that Paul chose not to make use of and why did he choose not to make use of it? Let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, the first two verses. Paul writes, Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are you not the result of my work in the Lord? Even though I may not be an apostle to others, surely I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. As you read through those opening verses, it becomes rather apparent that there must have been some people either inside the church at Corinth or possibly on the outside of the church looking in who began to question Paul's legitimacy as an apostle, basing it on what he had chosen to do or not to do while he was in the city of Corinth. And you can almost sense Paul's frustration because of all the people, the Corinthians should have known better. I mean, who was it that brought them the gospel message of Christ as the Son of God and their Savior, through which the Holy Spirit had brought them to faith? It was the Apostle Paul. The Corinthians were, as Paul puts it, the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. Paul then goes on to remind the Corinthian Christians of the rights that he had as someone who had spent a considerable amount of time and effort teaching and preaching to them the truths of God's word. He goes on to write, This is my defense to those who sit in judgment on me. Don't we have the right to food and drink? Don't we have the right to take a believing wife along with us, as do the other apostles and the Lord's brothers and Cephas? Or is it only I and Barnabas who lack the right to not work for a living? Paul had the right to ask those who he served to provide for his physical needs, things like food and drink. And like the other apostles, like Cephas, um, probably better known uh, by his nickname, Peter, who was married, who had a wife, Paul could have brought his wife with him on his missionary journeys had he chosen Mary. Paul had the right to support himself with additional work outside of his ministry. However, there seemed to be some in Corinth who, who looked at what Paul did or did not do and thought, well, because Paul did not make use of his rights as the other apostles did, it shows that he's not really an apostle. What they failed to consider was, why? Was there maybe a reason that Paul didn't do these things? And as I read through this section, I thought it was probably a good reminder for each of us not not to jump to conclusions when you hear of somebody supposedly doing or not doing something? How many conflicts could be avoided if we just went and asked the person, so can you explain this? Why? Uh, and we stopped and we listened. Might there be a reason that I didn't immediately respond to your text message other than that I'm a really big jerk? Might there be a reason that you didn't go to that family gathering other than that you think that you're way better than everyone else in your family? 
in our world of instantaneous communication and snap judgments, wouldn't it be wise for us just to stop, to ask, to listen, to talk, to understand, and then to come to our conclusions and respond? Paul goes on to remind the Corinthians of what he had the right to do and why that was, and then later on, why he chose not to make use of those rights. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Who serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard and does not eat its grapes? Who tends a flock and does not drink the milk? Do I say this merely on human authority? Doesn't the law say the same thing? For it is written in the law of Moses, Do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain. Is it about oxen that God is concerned? Surely he says this for us, doesn't he? Yes, this was written for us because whoever plows and threshes should be able to do so in the hope of sharing in the harvest. If we have sown spiritual seed among you, is it too much if we reap a material harvest from you? If others have this right of support from you, shouldn't we have it all the more? This section begins with just some, I guess I would say like common sense examples from everyday life. A soldier should expect to be supported by those that he protects. Uh, a fruit farmer gets to eat some of the harvest that he was responsible for planting and then bringing forth. A shepherd drinks some of the milk from the sheep that he cares for. But this isn't just like some human observation or expectation. Paul points to the way that God chose to provide for those who did God's work in the Old Testament. And then Paul explains that it isn't merely about making sure that oxen or donkeys were taken care of. The same principle also applies to those who serve people's spiritual needs by preaching and teaching God's word to them. Paul puts it this way in verse 11. If we have sown a spiritual seed among you, is it too much if we reap a material harvest from you? You know, you think about it. The reason that I'm able to be a full-time pastor is because the people here at Star of Bethlehem provide for my material needs by paying me. Now, you might also notice that the Bible does not say how much those who provide for our spiritual care are to be paid. I remember somebody along the way something, say something along these lines that, a pastor or a teacher would be willing to work for free, considering the great privilege that it is to serve people with the treasure of God's word. And at the same time, a Christian congregation will eagerly support their pastors and teachers, recognizing the, the priceless blessings that have come to them through that minister and the ministry among them. Now, abuse by the pastor of such rights by demanding that they be compensated a certain amount, and on the other hand, neglect by a Christian congregation feeling to support their pastors and teachers. You know what? Both can be avoided when both parties remember the privilege it is to serve in the gospel ministry and to be served by faithful gospel ministers. Paul then goes on to explain why he chose not to make use of his right to expect compensation for his ministry among the Corinthians, he writes, But we did not use this right. On the contrary, we put up with anything rather than hinder the gospel of Christ. Don't you know that those who serve in the temple get their food from the temple? And that those who serve at the altar share in what is offered on the altar? In the same way, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. But I have not used any of these rights, and I'm not writing this in the hope that you will do such things for me, for I would rather die than allow anyone to deprive me of this boast. For when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, since I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. If I preach voluntarily, I have reward. If not voluntarily, I'm simply discharging the trust committed to me. What then is my reward? Just this, that in preaching the gospel, I may offer it free of charge and so not make full use of my rights as a preacher of the gospel. Paul begins by explaining that he thought that asking the Corinthian Christians to provide for um, 
to provide for his physical needs might, as he puts it, hinder the gospel of Christ. And you might wonder, well, how? Well, think about it in this way. Paul shows up in the city of Corinth and he begins telling people about Jesus, the Son of God, who lived, who died, and rose for them in order to make them right with God, to forgive all of their sins, and to give them eternal life in heaven. And then he starts passing the offering plate, asking for money. <laughs> all right, so what conclusion might the Corinthians come to about Paul's motive for bringing them the supposedly great news? Maybe he was just in it for the money, right? Or maybe this good news was conditional on the amount of money that they gave to him. Paul wanted to remove any possibility of confusion or that his compensation being a barrier to them listening to him or believing in Jesus. So is Paul bringing that up now so that he can get the Corinthians to give more money? Um, not at all. Paul writes this, and I am not writing this in the hope that you will do such things for me. For I would rather die than allow anyone to deprive me of this boast. Yeah, Paul's not looking for a pay raise. In fact, he says that he would rather die than be compensated for his ministry among the Corinthians. And why did Paul feel so strongly about that? Well, Paul's situation was a little unique compared to others who serve as pastors or teachers of God's word, Paul was compelled to preach. Remember, Jesus directly told Paul in person that he was to preach the gospel. And therefore, in a sense, Paul didn't really, I guess you would say, have a choice. He was to be a gospel minister. And what he did have a choice in was whether to be compensated for his gospel ministry or not. Although he was free to do so, and he even had the right to do so, he, he decided not to. And why? It was a way for him to demonstrate his gratefulness for the gospel ministry that Christ had called him to do. That was his boast. That was his reward to preach the gospel free of charge. So let me ask you, does that mean then that it's wrong for pastors and teachers to expect or even ask for compensation from those that they serve with God's word. I think that this section of the Bible, as well as others, make it absolutely clear that Paul's situation was the exception and not the rule. God does expect that his people eagerly and willingly compensate and support those that serve them with God's word but also that those who serve God's people will want to reflect the heart of the Apostle Paul, remembering at all times what a privilege it is to be called by God to preach and to teach the gospel. Next week, we're going to finish up chapter 9 as we consider what we should and should not be willing to do as Christians and as a Christian congregation to reach others with the message of Christ our Savior. Until that time, have a great rest of your week. Hope to be able to worship with you either in person or online this weekend. Uh, you can worship here at Star of Bethlehem either on Saturday at 5.30 p.m. or Sunday morning at 8 or 9.30. Have a great rest of your week and we'll see you for some more Bible study next time.